Hello everybody, welcome back. Stephen and John from Davenrich European Martial Arts School. We got a request from MGW General about using the tomahawk against a machete. Now, the way he put it, real life questions. I want to say right now, I have never been in this position. I have never had somebody coming at me running through the forest in South America with a machete trying to kill me. What I'm giving you here is theory on historical techniques. So we'll take that with what it is. But I did want to answer MGW General's question. We're going to be using more LARP weapons so that we can swing at each other with intent without actually damaging each other. I mean, I don't mind hurting him, but I don't want to injure him. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's I appreciate least, that. Least I can do. No, really, it's the least I can do. So with that, we're going to talk about some of the techniques before we go into a practical application. When you've got somebody coming at you, we don't want to block them. There's a difference between a block and a parry. A block stops the energy of the incoming attack. A parry redirects the energy. Both have their times. Both are good. Both can be detrimental to your health if used at the wrong time. We are going to be using a slap parry. When we look at a tomahawk, it's a two pound metal head on a wooden or metal or synthetic handle. So it has some mass to it. I don't need to try to focus on getting my edge into play. If I do, cool, but the problem with that is even if I do, I have a very good chance of it getting stuck or losing it through sweat or anything like that. So what we're gonna use is a slap parry. If my opponent is swinging down at me, just coming in just to hit me in the face or the head with a machete blow, which I dislike, I don't want to let him do it. So what I'm going to do is I've got my axe tomahawk at the ready. I'm going to step out and I'm going to go into basically a defensive position. You can hold that. My when we look at defensive wounds in hospital records, it's this kind of position and we see cuts on the hands and the forearms because they're trying to defend themselves. The more experienced people that have worked with knives understand that we should use the back of our hands and the back of our arms so that when we get cut, not if we get cut, but when we get cut, it doesn't take the tendons that control my fingers or the arteries or veins that are running on the inside. So we use this. In this action, we are not going to use the back. We're going to use the front, kind of. It's more of a 45 degree because I'm going to crank my elbows into my side, both of them, into this kind of position. And this is the defensive position I'm talking about. So as it comes in, I'm just going to crank my arms into my side. And I want both arms to go. If I only get one arm, it throws my shoulders off and I lose my balance. When I get both arms in, it locks me into position and it allows me to use my structure in the action. So when Joe Thug is coming at me to hit me, I'm not going to move. It's just coming in and remember he's throwing power because he wants to first intimidate me, scare the bejeebers on me, and do as much damage as possible with that first blow so he can take his time on anything he wants to do afterwards. Right? Don't expect the first shot to finish the fight. And anybody who's been in any kind of real altercation understands that concept. So when he's coming at me, he's coming with power and it's swinging through. And if he's standing still, he might wind up like this. But if he's coming at me out of the forest, he's probably just running in and just swinging down like this to do as much damage to me as possible. That's where my elbows come in. So as he comes in, I'm going to step to the side and just do that. Now, we're going a little soft right now, but we're going to gear up a little bit and we're going to try to really pound on each other. Yeah? Yeah. The technique we're going to work on is, if we do that again, first thing, go ahead, I'm not going to move. 
This is coming in. Let's go here because you okay. want to go for my neck. Got it. Cool. Do it again. It's coming in at my neck to do as much damage as possible. Cool. Always, always, first thing you do, go ahead, get out of the way. Don't get so far out of the way that you're completely out because that means your movement's too big. All I need to do is move half my body width. If he's going to hit me on the side of the neck, here, when he hits me and I step here, he's catching me on this shoulder. That's okay. My feet control the distance my trunk moves and my tool controls the defense of my shoulders. So I don't need to move my shoulders all the way out of the strike. So if we do that again, so this comes in, I'm not going to move. That's the blow coming into my neck. I've got my ax, he comes through and I crank it here. Then look where that leaves my tomahawk. So at this point I can just whack him in the head or it just turn and now I get a flat slap to the side of the head. I don't care how tough you are. You take an ax to the side of the head like this, you're going down, especially if your feet are running and your head gets stopped. I've had that happen to me where I get hit in the upper body. My feet don't know, so they keep running and my body stops and then I hang for a second in the air before I land flat on my back. It works really well. You've had that happen to you too, right? I have had that happen. Most of us have at some point. So, can we switch sides and do that again? Yes, sir. So you get an idea, I'm not going to move, go ahead. This is the blow coming in, go ahead. I'm just going to, ah, and then whack him. That came really close. <laughs> Let's put on some masks, please. All right, so we're going to mask up. We'll be right back. Now that we have our protection on, John's going to throw an attack at me. I'm not going to move on the first one. He's going to hit me a couple times, just so you can see the level of force that he's throwing at me. All right. This is where he gets to get even for all those Todd moments. So I'm just going to stand here, just feet square. I'm not in any kind of fencing stance. Ow. Cool. Let's do that again. All righty. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, don't be so happy for that. Okay. Already. <laughs> yeah, that's highly unpleasant. I think I'm not going to let him do that to me this time. Okay. Uh-oh. Ready? Ready. Now, we're going to see this working in real time. Go. Ah, uh, I missed. Do it again. You okay? Ooh, good. All right. Again. Again. Nice. How you doing? You okay? Good. Yeah. The only thing that's actually of any form of discomfort, and you can actually see it just a little bit right there. You left some of your axe on my glove. <laughs> yeah. Which is a really good thing that we have that, is I can feel that shot just smash right across this area here. I'm taking that entire half right there. Understand, I'm not trying to block his tool. I'm blocking his hand. I really want to break that hand. Yeah. So let's switch sides and do it again. Sounds good. Check measure. Nice. Good. All right. At speed. You okay? Good. All right. I don't know if anybody here ever understands in a full contact system there at a high speed impact, your spine warms up. And now I have a back sweat going. <laughs> All right, one more time. One more. Ready? Ready. Ah, I moved too soon. That's why we got to train. Mm -hmm. Ready? Ready. Go, go. Okay, no, no, I'm, I'm better now. I'm better now. No. Ow. No, really. Go. I'm better this time. Okay, we're good to go. All right. Oh, wait, hold on. Yep. Tomahawk. <laughs> When we got this comment, this request, the, he was talking about having people running out of the forest at him with a machete in South America. So to get an idea, you know, I'm, I've got my axe 
as a general rule, I'm not just going to let it hang down by my side if I think there might be the potential for danger. So I'm just going to keep it up nice and relaxed in my hand, but more at hip level. So I'm not having to bring it from all the way down here because it'll never work. It'll be too long. So what's going to happen is we're going to start off with John's going to run at me and hit me in the head. I just don't know when he's going to start. So we're going to do that. Then what we're going to do is I'm going to be talking to you and he's going to run out of the woods and attack me when I'm not paying perfect attention to him coming at me. Should be interesting. Should be. All right, let's go ahead and get started with this. Now that we're set up, John is off screen. He's back a good, what would you call that? About 15, 15 20? 15, 20 feet. So this way he can get a good run and start at me. On this first couple, I'm going to pay attention to him. On the, se on the next ones, I'm going to be talking to you and he's going to attack me out of the blue. I love what I do, but sometimes I question my choices. You ready? Ready. All right, let's go ahead. You all right? Good. Okay, so let's stop for a minute. What happened? Took it right across my belly. Take a shot. Started on my liver line, came right across here. So let's go back up real slow. Yeah. This is what I saw. Now just come in real slow. Mm -hmm. He was coming in at a dead run and I wanted to get out of the way and I just left it there and then he just kept running. Right, would you agree with that? I would definitely agree with that. Seems like I was the one who ran into an ax. Realistically, there's a chance that it might get hooked on a rib or something and ripped out of my hand. He's now thinking about something other than me. So that gives me an opportunity to escape. Yeah? Yep. All right, you ready? Ready. All right, let's do take number two. Yeah. So again, this time I'm paying attention. I want it, I'm nervous. I know it's coming, I just don't know when. So he, go oh, there he is. Oh, there he is. I didn't hit him. Nope. Where did I, well here, come back on screen. When I defended myself, where did I hit? You actually got me right about here. So I just broke his arm. Yep. With an axe that's completely a broken arm. Would you agree? I would definitely agree, if not a deep fracture. Yeah. Yeah. Possibly compound. There's a good chance, because you're snapping that in there. You have two pounds of mass at the top here, and a hardwood or a hard synthetic cast. Yeah, I'm, I'm that's hitting damage. that. I'm hitting that bone hard. Well, actually, he's hitting my axe hard. Yeah. All right, so let's do one more. Sounds good. This time, I'm gonna be talking to you guys. So I don't actually know when it's gonna happen. So there's a very good chance I might get run over. Um, it really scares me when I think about doing this because it could go, oh shit. Ah. He got me. Could go, oh shit. Ah. He got me. <laughs> you got me as well. Yeah, he got me square on the head. <laughs> Where did I get you? Right in the ribs. Right <laughs> ribs. Right here, right underneath that armpit line. And the reason we both got hit, I was, I missed my defense. Mm -hmm. Instead of doing this when I stepped out, I did this and I didn't protect myself. So that's a great example. Yeah. Let's go ahead and take off our mask. Sounds good. So thanks for watching. I hope that what we offered you helps. Again, 
I've never been walking through the jungles of South America and had somebody come running at me with a machete. So I'm talking theory, but this is the type of action that was used historically. Should work just fine now. Do you have anything you want to add? Uh, yeah, first and foremost, don't be uh, dealing with people flying at you with a machete. Because yeah. um, I'm the one with the machete, but I can see where I'd be in that spot, and that's a terrifying thing. A really good standing out again is the reinforcement of never be directly in line wherever they're moving. Move out of the way. It doesn't have to be a lot, as you train for, but always never stay yeah. where they're going. You don't know how much power they're coming in. Because if you stood there while I was coming in, I've, and you stop my machete, you're not stopping me. I'm going to yeah. just barrel into you. And remember, human nature almost always works in threes. Our phone number has three sets of digits. Our social security has three sets of digits. Most deities, there are three faces of the deity. When you look at attacks on the street, it's almost always a minimum of three attackers to one victim. With that in mind, I don't want to be in front of this attacker because there's a really good chance that there's at least two others that I need to deal with or escape from. If I can damage him bad enough, hopefully his friends will take him off to, to mend his wounds. When I was in the army, we were always told with the M16, it's not as devastating as the AK-47, but that's because with this round, we want to damage, not kill. Because with one wounded person, that is three off the field. One dead guy is one dead guy. Yep. One wounded guy, two of his friends take care of him. And that's what we're hoping will happen here. With all this said, stay safe, please. I hope this helped. I hope you enjoyed it. John, thank you for all your help. That was a lot Always of fun. Always a pleasure. Yeah, yeah, I could tell. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. All the best to you. Stay safe. <laughs> it flexed and I didn't expect it to flex. <laughs> Dude, I have not blinked ever when we've done those works without that thing on until that moment and the one before. Both of them wobble. Both of them like, yeah. <laughs> Ready? Stop, stop. Okay, no, no, I'm, I'm better now. I'm better now. No! Ow. No, really. I'm better this time. Okay, we're good to go. All right. Oh, wait, hold on. Yep. Tomahawk. Oh, hey! I always know how to get him up. I think I'm going to cut that part out. Just leave the feeding in. <laughs> All right. All right, I got stuff left. I'm a fucking professional. <laughs> I'm a delicate flower, damn it. <laughs> <laughs>